Hello and welcome to the NDS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Nomer Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. What's in the box? What's in the box? I I, I don't know, man. Like I, I'm just too afraid to open it. Jacob, it's open it. something pointy. <laughs> What do you say, man? What do you say? It's probably something pointy inside, so handle with care. Oh no, man! Like you, you, you need to do the Baldur's Gate thing. You grab a box, you go to the highest ledge, and drop it so you can open it. What if it's invulnerable? Don't know, man. We'll, we'll just have to find out the hard way. So anyway, if it's invulnerable, that is. Lo- if it's invulnerable, that's like the best box ever made. Take that into battle. <laughs> that is well, how do you open it then? <clears throat> I, I don't know, man. Probably a switch under the box. <laughs> Foreshadowing. Maybe it's more like, maybe it's more like uh, if you throw the box, it opens the, someone's death. <laughs> mm, preferably outside <clears throat> the box. Uh, but anywho, in today's episode, we will be reviewing My Little Pony Tell Your Tale Season 1, Episode 6, The Unboxing of Izzy. So, um, in this episode, Hitch is in the middle of giving his friends a tour of Maritime Bay when Izzy accidentally activates and gets trapped inside one of those old unicorn box traps. How will they solve this problem and ha- <laughs> and what will they do? So, uh, <laughs> first impressions are in order. Silver, what do you think? Well, this was early on in the run of Tell Your Tales, so it, we were still just getting a feel for everything. And it was nice to see a tour of Maritime Bay and all that's involved, but it also hi- highlights the difference in Hitch from wait, from the movie to this series. But I also enjoy just Izzy's indomitable optimism and having uh, her having fun with all this. That, that is true. She is special. So that's about the long and the short of it for now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Jacob, what about you? Uh, honestly, I think that whoever released this episode got the um, order wrong, because I don't know, uh, considering what's happening. Uh, you know what, I'm going to wait and wait a little bit on that one, but honestly, uh, I think it's a bit... Uh, uh, not much to say. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm going to explain later when we get into it. All right, okay. And as for me, I feel like... This episode, okay, um, in a nutshell, this episode was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, it shows everything in Maritime Bay outside of what we see in the movie. And I think by this point, we don't see much except for the main, the, the town the town square itself. Uh, and I don't really remember seeing anything other than the factory from the movie. So it's just basically town square, um, a bit of beach if i'm not mistaken or am i that am i confusing that for a future episode but yeah uh, the point is it's one of those things where we get to see the environment of maritime bay which is awesome by by this point what we're in episode six and we get to see a bit of how maritime bay is uh it is total difference from g4 where we get to see everything they're showing sugar corner they're showing the schools and so on yeah so uh i like g4 better yep <laughs> so anyway yep. so anyway if you have not watched this episode yet pause here and go do so welcome back so anyway um f- for this one uh, i'm not going to go scene by scene because that's a bit how do i put this um, cliche for this one and it's just four minutes long so what I'm gonna do is just present our characters or, or, or ask you guys opinions for the characters and whatnot and what do you think also certain scenes and so on so I'm gonna start first and I'm just gonna say Hitcher is very fascinating 
he's the only guy in a group of ladies and he's kind of chivalrous in the sense that he wants to show the best of what Maritime Bay has to offer and when Izzy gets stuck in her box somehow he decides to cancel the plan and just this is the part where I I am not sure what Hitch is thinking Izzy gets trapped in a box he tries to unlock it but it fails by pressing the big red button and he decides to call off the what you call this uh, tour of Maritime Bay and from that point on I got no idea he, he doesn't state what he wants to do he just wants to call it off and I'm very confused by this point like uh, Hitch personally I know what you're trying to do but could you state it out for the audience at home so yeah th- for that part just confused me Silver Let's see, this really does highlight how different Hitch is from the movie. In the movie, he was very, he was an authority figure. He was uh, very aggressively enforcing the rules. And for a period, he was the main antagonist. Uh, that, of course, diminished as the, and uh, Sprout would take over that role. Now we're being shown a kinder, gentler hitch, but to be honest, I feel that they overcorrect. That now hitch is more uh, prone to hysteria, (laughs) less sure of himself, less uh, engaged, at least in a positive way. And as such, uh, tell your tale, I feel like it can, well, actually, I'd say... Make your mark is even worse. Oh, that bad? Like, wait, what? Uh, are you saying that episode six hitch is borderline as worse as it's get, or uh, make your mark is worse? Actually, make your mark is worse. Hmm? Yeah, uh, make your mark is worse. I can tell you this. <laughs> oh, wait, what? <laughs> it's mostly. Sorry. It's because of the introduction of Sparky. Uh, once Sparky hits the scene, uh, poor Hitch is no longer the confident law enforcer. He's a overwor- overworked single dad uh, just trying to keep up with this uh, absolute terror of a child. So the, the, the Hitch of the movie is, pr- is pretty much gone. I'm afraid. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just because of... A and the thing is... I think it's because the staff wanted to make to make it clear Hitch is not a threat. He's not, uh, he's not anyone you need to be afraid of. But unfortunately, in doing so, they also made him someone who doesn't seem as reliable anymore. Oh, oh that's just bad. Like, the, the overcorrection just makes him worse. Like, on honestly, from what I can tell from this, he is a okay. From episode six of Tell Your Tales, from my opinion, right, what I'm seeing here is just that he's a very cool guy. He just wants to do the best for everyone and for Maritime Bay, and he's just you know trying to bring out the best in Maritime Bay and so on, but. Things just get in his way and derp it up, for lack of a better word. And, yeah, it's not that bad, but it it just gets funny as time goes on. And when you're telling me that, oh, what you, what you think episode 6 is, going forward, is going to be worse than episode 6, I'm just, oh no, that's bad. What, have you not seen uh, a lot of the G5 stuff? Oh, no, man. Like, it, it's one of those things where I got no idea why, but G5 has lost interest in me. Like, I, I, I lost interest in it. For, so, for some reason, like, the movies and the reviews that we're doing, 
is the only things that I've been catching up. Um, for yeah, basically, if we're not reviewing, I ain't watching, and that scares me. Oh. So. Afraid you will be. Yeah. You will be. So when we're going in to this review. I'm going in with a blank stare and an open mind. And when you're telling me stuff like, oh, uh, Hitch will be worse. Oh, no. And I use the Men in Black blinky thing from, from in front of me just to forget everything. <laughs> Wait until we get to the comics eventually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, comics are another thing. I can't wait to go do. I can't wait to go do the comics because Discord's there, and oh my god, that's gonna be awesome. <laughs> You're gonna be eating those words, pal. <laughs> when I mean awesome, that's sarcasm. Uh, boy. Well, that's good to know. Least. But anyway, uh, well, l- lest everyone think that I have nothing positive to say. This was a better step forward for Hitch and Izzy as a character dynamic. Uh, in the movie, Hitch, I think, was most aggressive towards Izzy. But that's because even she's a unicorn. And in, in story, uh, Hitch doesn't trust her because she's evil. That's what he thinks. I, I understand that, Norman, but... Uh, this one, now that, that that blatant racism is no longer uh, in play, uh, we get to see them interacting, being friends. Hitch is still, I think, put off by Izzy's, uh, well, her spontaneity, her quirky nature, and above all, uh, her just her unique approach to everything. As he's still a by the books kind of guy, and as a result, I think he's not uh, he's not able to keep up with Izzy at times. But it shows a greater care on his part for Izzy than in the movie. Uh, yeah, like to to be honest, for me personally, interacting with people like Izzy is not my strong suit because <laughs> I hate to say this, I may be a hitch because. I need some form of order. If we're going to do this, let's just do this by the books. No splashing here, in, here. no no splashing in some random uh, song in between point A to point B. Or jumping in well, the trash. <laughs> well, you, if you don't want songs, you're in the wrong franchise, brother. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> But but you know what I mean. But yeah, um, Jacob, what do you think, man? Like, um, what do you think of Hitch? Yeah, pretty much what Silver said. Uh, after the movie, Hitch pretty much got emasculated. To be honest, he just doesn't have that. Uh, what was the word? Determination. Yeah, and yeah, it's pretty much expected that he'd be most uh, that in the movie he was most. Um, what was it? Determined. By the book, belligerent. Yeah, aggressive to, uh, towards Izzy, considering she was the one that basically, quote unquote, invaded Maritime Bay. <laughs> she was invited to uh, invade. Yeah, an invitation that was like years late. <laughs> I mean, it takes time to read. <laughs> or the mailman got lost. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, all things considering, uh, this is still a better presentation for a hitch compared to what we get later down the line. So, yeah, I I don't think I have anything else to say about this. But I will say about what we were uh, I was gonna say earlier. I think this uh, episode is a bit out of order considering that well, hitch is basically showing uh, the newcomers. The, the entirety of uh, Maritime Bay. But this comes off as odd considering that, well, uh, Pip opened her own business already in this place. I mean... It... So... I, th- I think uh, this episode should have come on, uh, after, I don't know, uh, episode 4 or 3. 
which are items first, because that was when they were most, mostly stuck to the uh, lighthouse. You know, mm. the one, the first one was where uh, Zip and Pip uh, left uh, for mm. Maritime Bay. The second one was where they um, ran away to the lighthouse. No, yeah, uh, it, yeah, it should have been before the third episode because then Zip's already zipping about and uh, she helps other uh, Pegasite uh, teaching how to fly. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. But uh, to play devil advocate, they they could have not have the time and Hitch really wanted to show them and we see how Hitch is busy and I I think this is one of his free days where he gets to do stuff with his friends and uh, what he wants to do is show them around Maritime Bay and show their favorite spot or potential favorite spot that they would enjoy. So it could be interpreted that way too. Yeah, but again, back to the problem that people already open her own business in a place that she hardly even knew. That's kind of weird. I mean, devil's advocate here again. Uh, she just could have just go to her workplace and to the lighthouse day in day out not even exploring beyond that because probably she's afraid she might get lost probably she may be in the wrong side of town probably oh if maritime bay has a wrong side of town i want to see that have you not i've seen it so norman has seen it those bunnies are brutal i mean (laughs) yeah you came to the wrong (laughs) neighborhood buddy (laughs) That's right, hey, hey, man! I got the good carrots right here. <laughs> you say that, but they extort you for good, man. You want to cross that? You just want to cross that um, area to get to the next level? Oh no! They ask you to go get stuff for them. Or better yet, get a little West Side Story. Have the bunnies and the Pegasus snails <laughs> all circle about, each other. Funny enough, and, there, there was, the leader, the leader was a greaser. <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah. And then. You hear, you hear snapping, just like uh, West Side. Oh, boys. But, mm-hmm. And you're like, how are they doing that? They don't have thumbs. Magic. Well, legitimately magic for the bunnies. I, I got no idea about the snails. <laughs> magic, magic land. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I have a question mm-hmm. for everyone. What part of Maritime Bay would you go check out based on what hit shows everybody? The beach. Honestly, the swing thing that uh, Zip is interested in, that, that looks fun. Oh, the zip yeah. lines. So those look fun. Like, uh, it, it's not really pure nature, but it's around trees and you get to do some activities and whatnot. And that looks really adventurous. And they're not zip lines. They're uh, I, I I don't know what's I don't know what's it called. I know uh, my country has one of those. Uh, right, it's more of a tr- shopping. Right, it's more of a of a. Well, it's not quite a jungle gym, but it's an evolved version of that. Yeah, some, some kind of something. Like I I understand, and th- th- how do I put this? This looks pretty fun. It's not a jungle gym. I don't know. It's in the top of my head, but I really forget what it's called. But eh, whatever. But yeah, that looks fun. That looks fun. So, Jacob said beach. I said that jungle thing. What about you, Silver? I'm intrigued by the art museum and the movie theater. Hmm. Oh, well, yeah. Especially, I want to see the, this trot formers. <laughs> Will they kill Optimus Prime even in Equestria? Nah, man. There, there's a lot of explosions and whatnot. Th- this is the uh, Michael Mayer movie. Hey. <laughs> the Michael Hay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. <laughs> well, that's great. Then, will you see like a mayor? Just leaning over, what, a, a wagon stall trying to fix it? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yep. So, all right, cool, cool. And just lots and lots of explosions, courtesy of Michael Hay. Yep. <laughs> oh, boy. So, we, we talk about Hitch a lot. So, 
I'm guessing we all enjoy Hitch here, but he, he has a lot of potential that's squandered later on. All right. So, the mayor of the hour, Easy. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, Silver, Easy is your favorite, right? Well, it's been a competitive spot, my favorite. Oh. In the movie, Easy was clearly my fave. Uh, no questions asked. Then came the first special, and suddenly Zip was the one who was actually uh, being proactive and probably the better character overall. Mm-hmm. And then they introduced Misty, and I'm like, oh, Misty, uh-huh. she's she's been through so much. So, so she's a trooper. So three mares are fighting for your heart, then. Oh wow! It seems that way. Uh, why not all three? But yes, yeah, so Izzy's. Izzy still holds a very good spot in my heart. Mm, all right. So, Silver, you, you first then. Um, what do you think of her in this episode? Well, this, this demonstrates two things. Her boundless optimism, even when she's trapped in a box. Uh, but also, those unicorn guards really aren't that good if they can't neutralize the magic inside. I mean, if they if the unicorns had magic as uh, Maritime Bay feared, mm. these boxes wouldn't have stopped them at all. <laughs> if anything, you've just given them armor plating. You basically gave them a tank. Flying tanks. <laughs> Flying tanks, even better. Oh, that's... We warhammered this shiz. Oh, no. Oh, no, that's bad. All right. Of oh, course. <clears throat> so... So, I mean... I do, I do find it funny when she calls Hitch Hitchy Poo. Mm-hmm. Movie Hitch would not be okay with that name. Yeah. But uh, current Hitch is more mellow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe a little too mellow. Pro- probably he's stressed out and couldn't think straight. Or it's just easy special way of interacting with him. And he got used to it. I guess so. so <laughs> you think Izzy will get used to life in Maritime Bay? No, Maritime Bay is going to get used to Izzy. <laughs> that is true. It's the don't ask what Pinkie Pie is doing thing. Oh, don't question it. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. But, uh, I mean, I just remember Izzy being really chill, and she's relying on her imagination to see all this, which, if anything, I, I worry for her. No, real life sometimes can't live up to our imagination. It's true. It is. So there is no and parking the fact, meter. And then she actually uh, seems like she's going to miss the box. So I wonder if she took it home. Bright House has like a unicorn de- unicorn detainer in the basement. Oh God. I mean, if she could control opening and closing it, that would be awesome. She could use that as a arm of, to just go into battle. <laughs> and it has a siren too. Oh, sorry, the uh, flashing lights thingy. What was that called? It's not really a siren. Siren also has sound. Alarm? Uh, alarm? I, I guess alarm with... Yeah, but alarm has sounds. But Signal it, lights? I, I guess that's the best... Um, there's the closest thing we can come to the light thingy. Signal lights? Yeah, I guess. Going into battle. Signal lights are on. Oh no. Bad things are about to happen. Or hilarious things, depending on the fight. Yeah, it's also true. So, yeah. Jacob, what, what do you think of Fizzy, man? Uh... I'm fine with her. Uh, I mean, it doesn't get uh, as uh, irritating as it did in the previous episode. What was it? Night- uh, Nightmare Roommate. Oh, yeah, that one. You know, when she was... Yeah. So I can get the, the air cleaners out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, for, for me, right, this is a very fascinating episode for EZ. And... The way I interpret this episode is just that Izzy is very optimistic. She thinks, sorry, she has a very positive outlook on almost everything. And that's awesome. 
and you see her friends are trying to get her out. Hitch here is trying to get her out. And when it fails, and, and this is the part where I mentioned earlier that I get really confused and say, what is his plan? Is he going to cancel the road trip or the tour just to get easy out? He did. He doesn't even say that. So one could interpret that, okay, easy trap, cancel trip, I'm not going to deal with this. And Izzy here just says, it's okay, let, let's continue on with the tour. I, I can levitate the box. He asks, um, how are we going to see everything? You, you, there's no window there to see the environment. Izzy just says, I'll use my imagination. Yay! And that <laughs> using the imagination bit is funny. But at the same time, too, you're missing out on a lot of awesome things. And what I think make this work, this this dynamic work, is the three of the mares are trying their best to get her out and turning a bad situation into a good one. With Sunny here tying a rope around the box, turning it into a devastating balloon. And later on at the art museum, uh, who was it? Was it um, who, Pip. who was it? Pip drew off uh, her face. Pip, uh, yeah, Pip, yeah. Pip drew her face on the box, showing some kind of representation of. Hey, look! Uh, I'm here. This is how the audience at home will see who. Uh, I am and how I'm talking. <laughs> and, and just drawing that makes the box a little bit more special. Her home away from home. Away from home. Mm -hmm. That is true. Oh, please. <clears throat> Sorry. So, yeah, th 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 that's what I think, man. Like, the, the the three mares there make things a bit special. And talking... Sorry, before I move on. Silver, anything more to add for Easy here? Nope. That's about the long and the short of it. She is unflappable. Awesome, awesome. So, talking about the three other mares, uh, Zip, Pip, and Sunny. Uh, I, I don't know what to say, man. Like, they're just background ponies right now. Sunny does a bit of interaction saying that, hey, it's no problem. Um, we, we can still carry on. See, Izzy's... Uh, sorry, um, yeah, e Izzy's up for it. So let's, let's continue on. But besides that, they don't really do much, I think. Well, they're a collective. That's the best way. Instead of an individual characters, they're more of a, a group dynamic. Mm. Yeah, pretty much the like in the Nightmare uh, Roommate episode. Mm. And, yeah, and you were saying, Silver? Oh, just that, uh, well, they give Hitch the much-needed pep talk at the end. Mm. True, true. And... The the other thing, right, like I'm noticing is that for Tell Your Tale, they're doing this storytelling method of we'll focus on two characters for this episode and the others will be kind of backgrounds. Do you notice that? Mm, I've, well, honestly, that feels very similar to early G4. A lot of characters were ancillary to the plot. Yeah, like mo most of the starting of G1 where Twilight is the main character and Twilight interacts with X-Pony and they uh, they do tell a story. Except for the sleepover one where she's in the background and what is this? Applejack and Rarity fight over who sleeps in what bed.
So, yeah, I I think that's a good place. Um, any memorable moments from this episode? Um, I'm gonna go for silver. Let's see memorable moments. I mean, there is seeing the wake of destruction floating Izzy has left in her wake. Uh, there is that the funny image of Hitch and Box Izzy pacing back and forth in thought. Yeah, that's a good one. And, and there is Sonny's face hoof when Hitch gets uh, gets trapped for just a little bit of wah wah <laughs> at the end. Uh, yep. Yeah, mm hmm. Uh, they, they really need to. Get I mean, I can only. Im- I can only imagine what Hitch is doing inside the box. Is like, oh, come on. Yeah, they they really need to work on getting those traps out, man. Like that that is very really dangerous. Well, Hitch did did make a note to check for additionals. He got most of them, but apparently one or two slipped by uh, the cleanup effort. Mm-hmm. Also, since they were made by and installed by Phyllis's company, isn't she liable for all this? Probably. Who's the mayor again? Do do we know? Phyllis Cloverleaf? Uh, Yeah, the the, the local government is involved with this, so she needs to take responsibility. (laughs) Well, she she is essentially running this town, but I don't know if she has a actual legal uh, position. Also, do we know if it was her company that uh, installed uh, those of her volition, or was it, uh, I don't know, ordered by the local law enforcement? I assume installed by her company, but I don't know. Either or, I guess. But by this point, like, let's not question it. Oh, no, let's cut questions. I'm a reviewer. I'm supposed to get hung up on micro details. <laughs> yeah, true. But for this one, and, let's just see. She's the government and she... <laughs> Where the government? Oh, and... oh, good. You're thinking the same as I. <laughs> yep. I'm the reason nothing works. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, so... Yeah, okay, yeah. Th- those, are, those are good ones. A- anything more silver for memorable moments? Mm, let's think those are the big ones. Right. That you get to see Pony Optimus Prime. Yeah, no, wait, wait, wait. That was in a, that's in a later oh, episode. Oh, wait. You, we only get... Not the poster, then. Not the poster. At one point, they will actually go into oh. the theater. All right, cool, cool. We'll have to wait and see. And Jacob, any, any memorable moments for you? One word. No, one sentence. No, really? Think of something. Think outside the box. Ah, all right. <laughs> that 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 is a good one. That, that 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 is a good one because yeah, she's inside the box. See, get it? <laughs> and then she prances around uh, saying she's a unicorn again. <laughs> oh, all right, cool, cool. And, oh, yeah. Anything more? Uh, that's about all it. Right. Yeah, um, that's about it. For me, mo- memorable moments from this episode is just seeing um, Zip. Playing or, or just twirling around or swinging around, uh, big dangerous heavy box. She 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 looks like she's having fun. So yay! And talking about big dangerous heavy box is the part where after she paced back and forward, she forgot to move forward and move back all the way to her death, and everybody's like, "Oh no, the horror!" And she lands on a rock, thinking that, oh, probably the rock will save her and crack open the box. Nope. The rock breaks and somehow Izzy is still in one piece and not drown, I guess. So yeah, those are memorable moments for me. I was honestly more more worried that uh, her horn was gonna break because she landed on her head. Oh yeah, I, 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 the rock. I, I was thinking that too, and I'm thinking, oh no, that that's bad, that's very bad. Tempest Shadow is looking down from the afterlife, like, 
Child, I will save you from that fate. <laughs> and she sounded just like that. Don't question it. <laughs> Alrighty then. Hmm. And yeah, I, I guess that's about it because um, we've talked about almost everything. Unless anybody wants to add more to it? Yes, no? Yes, no, maybe? I, I'm guessing no then. Alright, cool, 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 cool. So, yep. yeah. Uh, I'm guessing that's about it. So, final thoughts is um, I like it. It's a pretty fun episode. It highlights the positive and negative for most of the ponies. And yeah, it is a fun episode. It's a fun episode. Silver? End of the day, it is fun. It, looking back on it, it's only unnerving because I know what's coming. <laughs> that scares me. In fact, I guess I guess that's what I'll think every time where we go into uh, an episode. I know what's coming. Oh boy. You're not ready for this, Norman, because you're not Batman. <laughs> uh, don't talk about Batman, man. The Kevin, sorry, the Suicide Squad game just got me really sad. Ah, but but thankfully that's not the last of Kevin Conroy's roles. That's true, but at the same time, too, they did him dirty, man. Well, then I'm just glad that's not his closing legacy. Oh, yeah, true. Jacob, any final thoughts for this one? Yeah, yeah. It was a, an okay episode. That's about it. All right, all right, all right. So let wraps things up. So if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themissionjimmy.com. Uh, you can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Roman Sanzo. Also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And yeah, that, that, that's about it. Uh, links in the show notes and so on. Um, Silver, where can the good people find you? You can find me on Twitter, DeviantArt, and YouTube under MLP Silver Quill. Uh, my YouTube will have links to my Kofi. And Patreon, where you can support After the Fact and my weekday puns. Awesome, awesome. And let's see, at the end of March, you can... I plan to attend BabsCon. Ooh. Where's BabsCon? I, I remember it well, because the name sounds familiar. But wh where is it at? Uh, Burlingame, California. Ah. Sounds like fun. Two-day event, three-day event. Three day event, nice. and I'm looking forward to it. Nice, nice. If you're heading that way, uh, check Silver out, it's going to be fun. Yeah, and I certainly think so. Yeah. Of course, I'm biased. Well, you're going, that's why it's fun. If I was going, I'll say it's fun too, but I'm not going, but I'm gonna say it's fun. Yeah, <laughs> appreciate it. So, anyway, Jacob, what about you? Where can the good people find you? Uh, you can find me on the DeviantArt under the username Yaka von Torker, under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Tomorrow Rising, you can find it on filmfiction.net. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. Awesome, awesome. Go do so. And if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, we get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Jacob, Lucky Knight, and myself. Like, Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. I'm Jakob. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. So the box was not that bad. It was a unicorn. <laughs> unicorn box. Yeah. Oh, this is how a unicorn box box. Oh no. Why, why does that song really totally remind me of that song that Justin Timberlake did? Oh god.